Hey, what's going on, guys? It's... Fuck, I can't even do my intro right. I'm fucking out of it. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Train. Um, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I can't English. I'm still recording this all on the same day. Um, but, uh, yeah. We're going to hop right back into this. In the last episode, we kind of found out a lot. So, Yuri isn't doing too well. Um... She's kind of avoiding us. Natsuki kind of is a little upset now that she found out we're writing, we're kind of more on the side of Yuri. Uh, well, like making a promo specific for her. And then, um, obviously we have to prep for the weekend for the festival. It's on Monday. And, and it was a choice between helping Monica, Sayori, Natsuki. Uh, or technically the choices were Natsuki, Monica, and Yuri. And it was an option for Monica. I didn't do the Monica, uh, the, or the choice of Sayori, rather. Uh, again, English, it's all the same day, so I'm a little, like, out of the loop and crazy. But, I chose to work with Yuri, and we are now, uh, she's, she come over to a place on Sunday. Well, it's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I can't, I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She just made me happy hands at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. What are Yuri aside? I haven't heard anything from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we check to text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, do you think me to put Sayori's feeling aside when she might need me? So I to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reached Yuri's house, I'm knocking on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play often, so we made it much a habit of entering those house when we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange for her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ra- Ooh! Nice pajamas. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell if she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, huh, I guess you're right. This has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it always been. I, was I also recognize the same sentinels, well, dark friends that she's had for years now. <laughs> you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. Maybe because I ended up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be seeing Yuri today? Yeah, but wait, how'd you know that? Sayori had already left by the time. by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Oh god, I'm adjusting my seat. Fuck. Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? There it is. Of course. I'm just helping her online. You didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Yuri stays in a random direction. Everything about her behaves is really uncharacteristic. Finally, I get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something was wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sarah so smiled, shaking her head. That's no good, Ryan. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and actually express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been ever even thinking about me right now. This is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It was just torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I have Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something has happened to you. There's no explanation for yourself to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't stop. be able to stop thinking about it. Huh. <laughs> Sayori has an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Ryan. But... You're wrong. Nothing's happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're just going to make me say it, aren't you, Ryan? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've really... I've... Dude, fuck me. That... Fuck. I guess it makes sense. I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? I go to school. Why eat? Why make friends? 
A lot of maybe other people put their energy in caring to waste by having them spend it on me. That's what it feels like. That's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. Holy shit. I need a minute. I need to take a minute. Um... Fuck. Uh, fuck. I'm speechless. <laughs> because I'm always why I'm still speechless because this is how I kind of always have been myself. I've always felt like Sayori does, like kind of always down on myself and depressed and. I've always tried to make it my goal to make others happy, even though I'm not happy myself. Because I basically have always thought, why does some, why, I don't want people to go through what I'm going through. I want people to be happy. Fuck. Wow. That caught me really off guard. Fuck. <laughs> She sounds, she sounds almost exactly like I do whenever I'm down the dumps. <sighs> okay, let's continue. <laughs> Basically, that's how I describe when I heard that. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Yuri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? She really wants so badly for me just not to think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I, I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you have to do is tell me. You don't understand at all, Ryan. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung, swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. And I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends get close with everyone in the club it feels like a spear going through my heart. So That's why. That's why I decided the world's supposed to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Ryan. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that I could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I was punished by my heart hurting in a way I couldn't understand. And now you came here to make... You came here I ma and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm willing to accept these punishment. Because I deserve every last one. That's the game. What's the way I'm saying Rachel? This is my polar into a tight embrace. Huh? Ryan. Say Ori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. Please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have had it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Fine. Sayori isn't hugging me back. If I my arms being wrapped around the Sayori's arm with me in her sides. Starts sobbing next to me here. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. Ryan. I... Sorry, but I managed to speak between your sobs. I know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. <sighs> Fuck this. This. Fuck. If you have it, if you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away, and if there's anything that you need me to do. Then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. 
Gently Siri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's, it's all really... S I didn't see what that is. I don't understand any of my feelings, Ryan. Only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But... The hugs are so warm. That's really scary, too. She already lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all spend it all with you? Um Uh That's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. She already wipes her eyes. I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, it has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that then I would really would then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for you to meet at my house. At the very least, you want me to come along and help? Do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. I'm surprised. Some Siori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh huh. Kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I think about a Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As part of my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Y Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You, always, you could have always texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Huh, I suppose that's true. I think of that, didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. Did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. So I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Ugh. Fuck, my posture's really bad. Fuck me. First thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no, it w I would be really embarrassed for my room if to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. I do enjoy cleaning. I wonder if Valdi helped you clean. Huh. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. Said Yuri's wrist while she was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh huh. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. Just both of her hands firmly on her lap as if she was just keeping track of me. So, um, should we get started? Ah. Yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I don't think you planned it on taking it that far. Of course! I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. The man will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah. Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something I like about you, actually. Is that so? It makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no one needs to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. That's the things for relaxation. I'm just going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri, Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did be shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. And that'll be amazing, don't you? Yeah, it'll be really neat. It's a wooden thing, though. Look this. Diffuse it for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? I am not familiar. <laughs> yup, not familiar at all. Not a clue. <laughs> not a clue. What's the recording at? Oh, it's only 14 minutes. I thought it was longer. I feel like I've been doing this for a while. Oh, because of the last recording. Never mind. I'm a dummy. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite con contributions to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Here he takes a cylinder puts a switch in the bottom. This is the moment a thin ray of vapor begins to spread through a small hole on the top. 
Ah, it smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It was a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, it's a good way to describe it. Just jamming for the event because it finds more than relaxation. It just enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Think they'll be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. You seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Ruby smiles gently, enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Um, you purchased the original, the origami paper I asked you for? Yeah, I have it over here. We will be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word in each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What would those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang to the door of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper to the ribbon screen to doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some people to peek inside. That's really creative. I know it would be so good at this, Yuri. That's so. Those do get a little intense, as as you put it. <laughs> Yuri gives with red cheeks. Is this me, or is she more relaxed when it's with the two of us? Maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something she enjoys. Probably both. Here's a marker, Ryan. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbon. Ah, all right. We can pour together. The two of us get to work. Carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to make. To manage my bad handwriting, Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of the waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's not a really pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well. Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, what is it? I have no reason to judge. They each their own, you know? I promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. Combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Oh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's well, just a thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. That's really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Your relaxed expression, expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Your careful hands in the knife with the handle facing me. Taking a turn around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious? Which arm and I feel the point of the knife in my index finger. Ow! Ryan! Why'd you do that? You didn't have to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. The thing is extremely sharp. You can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ha! Ah! She stares at it and nervously fidgets. You're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah! Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instantly pull my hand back. Oh! Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. Hi. Yuri loads her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah, I'm sure, it was a little weird and it took me a surprise. I guess it's her just, she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. Take Yuri's hand and lick her index and go return. Hi, in. Did you really just do that? Now we're even. You're just looking at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would have been a bad idea. I'm supposed to be a room of jasmine oil. The air will be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Ryan. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? You're already calling me weird? I have a response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah. Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It's a tiny cut. Oh, look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's for leaving. The tension quickly is swiftly lifted. We choose our respected a activities. I watch Yuri's cut knife the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. We then finish the paper in the room as we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected. Very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thing you can be up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. Just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? Let's create a banner. 
So I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. Oh, the answer is to buy a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. Fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. The can use said to use small plastic bag for friend the full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, but bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I'm gonna see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over. Oh no. Oh fuck. We're going down that road, aren't we? Should have figured from the fucking knife. Ah, fuck. If this is what I think it is, and I'm 90% sure it is, I'm going to put a warning in right now. I should have put it with the whole thing with Sayori right beforehand, but that kind of came out of nowhere. And I kind of said at the beginning of the series, but I'm going to say it again now. If any, if you are easily triggered by sensitive events, whether it be depression-based events, anxiety, whatever, click off now. For the love of God. <laughs> Ah, fuck. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is too hot in here or anything? Ah. No, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes upon himself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I thought I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Oh, wait, I read that wrong. Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. You can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'd be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri is a brush and has a few dots of different colors across the banner, so there's a color gram when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Being on a banner with watercolor feels a lot like the art craft projects we had back then. It's really relaxing. Uh huh. Sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean it at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. It is fun. Why'd you feel that way too? Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. This is like when I spend time with one other person. Even something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if you don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I understand where he's coming from. I feel that way about things like enemy and games, or simply the sharing experience someone can make me happy. I mean, yeah. Kind of my thing with that. That's why I kind of wanted to do... I've always wanted to do a podcast to just talk about games. Which is why when me and Liquid... Which is why when Liquid came to me saying, Hey, yo, do you want to start a podcast? I was like, fuck it. It doesn't even need to be... Call of Duty with it. I just want to be games because I love talking about games, whether it be stuff like, like stuff like Call of Duty or Minecraft or like anything. Just games in general. I love talking about them. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over to the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah. Sorry. Yuri goes back and I quickly lift my hand in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, huh, your face. There are drops of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. Rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. Turn my room in your back down in front of her. Okay, maybe I want this one. <laughs> I mean, both of them are cute. I like, I like this. These are cute. Here, pat Yuri's face down with the neck, with the face and neck with the towel. Ah, what do I think? I can. <gasps> oh my god. Oh. Something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? 
just for a little longer. Feels really nice. Ah, get my hand against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. The same expression I recognize from when she reads her books. Whether she's lost some days involved by her own thoughts. She breathes gently half through slightly half-parted lips. What is happening? Does your aroma of Jasmine give me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist and a tingling sensation through my arm. Suddenly her face is much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah! Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movement seems clumsier like she's unable to focus. I ain't silent before to ignore the event that this transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. Let's do it. Finish filling that sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty natural and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I did not know I could right click. So yeah, if I wonder what I'm doing, I'm literally just right clicking, and it's getting rid of the text box, which I need to know from now on for if I'm like music like this. Yeah, it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. Needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and have you bring it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything else more for to do here. Phew. <laughs> you said that you're glad it's over. Is that wrong? Do you see me really enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. We need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? You should be hoping to have extra time after finishing this work. Well, Harry thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. It's hard for me such a slow worker. Well, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering out all our things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. So I'm actually rarely get to our previous spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. Does that mean she this is the last time it can happen? But does that doesn't mean it's the last time this can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need to bring bring in tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I can't say that without thinking about today. Sorry, we didn't have as much time as we wanted. We can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. The symbol over my words, Yuri, simple smile, bashfully. Anyway, you know what? You know what I'm trying to say. So you're very thoughtful, Ryan. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, am I supposed to respond to that? But I didn't even get a chance to. So, as uh, suddenly Yuri suddenly throws back, Sayori, eh? Ah, hi Ryan. Sayori, just now we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Ryan. Just stop by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. We'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so so that's fine, right? Of course, Theory beams. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Feeling embarrassed, Yuri hur hurries off. Theory waves goodbye after her. Theory, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh -huh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my mattress was being really mean to me. I thought I'd come, I'd come here and see for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. How close you got to her. Makes me really happy. Are those tears in our eyes? It is tears. They've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Like, I'm trying to hear the music because I'm not, I don't have earbuds anymore. That's all that matters to me. Tears have fall down Siori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Ryan? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Ryan. If, it wasn't, if I wasn't here, 
You wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Theory. What I said before you was true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. Something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if this takes, takes another life, an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, Zuri looks away, put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Ryan. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Ryan, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. So I hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand on my own. Do you remember how I said I, I always know what's best for you? You still believe me. Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your, your life's own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Fuck. This is the decision I'm afraid I know the result of. And as much as I really, really would... In, I want to do what I w originally planned to do. If this were actually me in this scenario, like IRL, I know what answer I choose. But because I want to go down the route I want to go down, and I see something, and I see someone I relate to more, other than just for my depression, I, I relate to more with overall emotion when it comes to just being around people and having social anxiety and stuff like that. This is the choice I'm gonna make. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be what they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happy you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll get things back to the way they were. Hey, I see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. <laughs> this is what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest. I should write a poem about this. Sayori! It's okay. This is my punishment, remember? Being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time there's no no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I can get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I wanted that I wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Ryan. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, your smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. Zero Smack looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in the front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? Something more than I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But having such trouble understanding Sayori's feeling as she is. Even though I can confront her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Recording. 34 minutes. I can still go for another 15 or so. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I should this be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori doesn't answer her phone, though. If you're going to have to wake her up, I decide that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations of the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. 
She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funny enough, I probably feel the same way as Mitsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayuri and Yuri at the festival. Knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. No, oh, fuck me. <laughs> I kind of snap. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Monica just in general snaps me out of everything for some reason. I'm in my own head for a second there because I think I know what's going on here. Ryan! The first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica's placing a little booklet on each of the desks in the classroom. We'll see the one she repaired that have all the poems were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. That's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days like this important, she tried a little harder. I say that by something we realized. Remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's nearly not that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> You should take a little responsibility for her, Ryan. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the co-president, after all. But, I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sarah really tell her about the, it that quickly? How I basically turned her down her confession? It makes her really seem like the bad guy here. I, but I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. You probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Mine is being as friendly as usual. For some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh, yeah. They really did. The fact that there's no music is... Kind of off-putting. Oof, making me, it's weirding me out a little bit. Something like this would definitely help the people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. Flip through the pages. Each member's poem is nearly printed, is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize the Suki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? What's Sayori's poem? It's different from the ones she's practiced. It's one I haven't read before. It says, well, you can read it. I'm not going to read it all. Get out of my head. Get out of my head before I know what is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I do how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Okay. Ah, what is this? Reading that poem, I get a pin in my pit in my stomach. Ryan, what's wrong? Ah, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. More than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so ah, uh, all right. Try not to get take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Honor calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. <sighs> what was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, well, yes, I think we the same as they always have been. It's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. Are you serious? How's knock on the door? I don't expect an answer. She's not picking up her phone either. Like, I guess I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more something like a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. So that's Yori's room. I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. 
It would have been kind of a breach of privacy, but she really did. She really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh my god, it went where I thought it was going. Holy shit! I knew from the mu lack of music it was gonna go dark real quick. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit just yesterday. I told Tiara I would be there for her. I told her what I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession, it has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club, screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This is something. This is, isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. <laughs> no, maybe it is. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 And, and never. Yeah, I, I get the point. That's the end? <laughs> ah! Is that really the end? Wow. Well, what happens if I press this? Oh, okay. See, the annoying girl on You know, the kind of friend you would never see yourself making today, but just kind of works out to me, you know, for so long. We used to watch school together days with, but starting our high school, people would see more frequently. So she's out of waking up. She's going to chase after me because I'm much better off running away. Remember, I just idle and let you let catch up to me. It's our new school day like any other. Morning are usually the worst, surrounded by couples and friends who party together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. I have no motivation to join any clubs. I probably be attention to getting on, on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. It's always an anime club, but it's not like there'd be any girls in any way. The school day is as ordinary as ever, it's over before I know it. If I got my thing to start playing some while we can find out the motivation for clubs. There really aren't any interesting. In fact, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to do with. I have no choice but to start with the anime club. I am? What the fuck? Monica? Oh my goodness, it's only as soon as I see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we were really talking. We were in the same class last year. I'm probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me just, just so genuinely just feels a little... What did you come here for, anyway? Oh, I've been looking for some supplies for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Some markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. 
feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'm not trying to take something personally and do I make something special out of it. In that case, what club do you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? Sounds kind of dull. How many members have we do you have so far? Um... Ha <laughs> I'm embarrassed. There's only three of us so far. It's pretty hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? There's a to be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. Dude, one of my members even keeps her mommy collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, her member is a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Ryan. Are you sure? So are you still looking for a club to join? Ah! I mean, I guess so, but in that case... Is there any chance you can do me a big favor? I want you to join, but if you could at least at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how else would I could I refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome! You're really sweet, Ryan, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? Let's put the materials in another time. You're more important. Thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I simply follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica follows energy swings up on the classroom door. I am back! I brought a guest with me. Eh? A guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Brian. Oh, we're escaping situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. That's Suki. The girl with the sour ass whose name is Brown Suki is the one I don't recognize. It's a small thing makes you think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Suki, and her jack is usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Okay. It's nice to meet you. Yuri appears to be probably more mature and timid. It seems to have a hard time keeping the familiar with Suki. What the fuck do I. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I pressed the new game button, but technically it's not new game. <laughs> fuck? <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Fucking hell. What's the time on this report? 47. Okay. Um. Fuck. Uh, so I'm going to the classroom and decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but just happened to run into him. Hank, I said she at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Ryan? The girls have a few desks for ages from the table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Suki are sitting across from each other. Simply an extra hour to take a seat next to Monica. I know you're doing a ton of coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make both the club and fun exciting for everyone. Perhaps there aren't more people in the club yet. Did you harvest out in the club? You can put it that way. Many people are very interested in putting out all the efforts and starts something brand new. Just something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. The next school events like, fest like, that, like the festival that much more important. Fun that we can all really go to this club together, right, Mizuki? Well, Guess. So you were lucky to be So two young girls are just in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard to find these two. You return to Caribou carrying a tea set. Be careful with this tea cup in front of you two left before setting down the teapot in the middle. Do you keep a whole tea set in this classroom? I'm having major deja vu. Not because I've already done this, literally, but because I'm f Ugh, fuck me. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm getting intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not... It's all the Yuri looks away. Not that you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading may not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faint smiles to herself in relief. It's so, Ryan, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I replied to myself, half joking. Mitsuki's head suddenly perks up. Mitsuki wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. 
and then not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? He spoke without hesitation, seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Your taste is very the frame. The phrase you can know that those evil black fantasy worlds are the same as before. Yeah, yeah. I should be reading all this again. I guess something might happen. It, the thing is, it definitely... It's not a new game. Because I have the skip option. I would have the skip option. We have a deeply psychological element using mercy as well. Isn't it amazing how it is? Yes. I'm gonna say it properly. A writer can so literally take advantage of your own language of imagination to please through for a loop. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror. I read a horror book once. Just to grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a lot. Ah, I didn't expect that from you, Yuri. It's your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if the story makes me think. You seem of the world, and I really can't put it down. Real horror is often successful at changing the way you look at the world, even if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, what's like that? Oh, I just... So you guys dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually don't like to write down. You think you usually like to write about cute things, don't you? Just keep... What? I gave you that idea. There's to be a scrap here behind the club meeting. It looks like you were working on a phone call. Don't say it out loud. Get that back. I'm fine. Sometimes. What do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! You burst her eyes. You wouldn't like them. I'm not very careful to write it yet. I understand how Nisuki feels. Sharing with that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have any experience writing too, Yuri? Alright. evil. Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help me see the comfortable ones that share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. You all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Looking Yuri looks good to get a monica. If I go home and write a poem of our own. Next time we will all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Ah. I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start my activities for all of us participating together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, I only have a new member. I think there's a good step for all the press to take. Yes, well, we're running for and there's still one problem. Hey, what's that? I remember it's the most important topic. I believe you come forward with it, so I'm going to that. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but never made my, any decision. It's what the clubs to look at, and, um... I was a train of thought. All three ghosts are back with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I guess. I thought... <laughs> eh? No thing glanced before Mario turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Ryan. The thing is... We don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. I'm trying really hard to find new members. You don't find one World Force Festival. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear head decision when it's like this? I feel terrible for letting everyone down in the situation. Besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed, so writing poems is the price you need to pay to order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I am in the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Ryan? Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left, really just left her after all of this, I would be super pissed. Ryan, I'm so happy. You can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. I'm really, I can to give you a great time, okay? Ah, thank you for guests. Okay, everyone. I think that we can end today's me on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring the next meeting so we can all share. Ryan looks over me once more. Ryan, I look forward to seeing how you can express yourself. <laughs> yeah. I really... Here's for, if you, can I really impress the class star monitor with my unique writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. Let's be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. Can't wait. 
I had hurt the classroom and the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Mitsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. I'd be really happy spending every day of the school in LA with her club. Perhaps I'll have a chance to go close to one of these girls. Alright. I see it makes most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts writing a poem tonight. You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm going to save here. Um, so... On that note... Ooh, fuck. That's <laughs> so weirding me out. On that note, um, I'm thinking, uh, we're gonna end the episode off here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I've done, this will be the third episode today, I think. So we're on episode four, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. So with that, I'm gonna end this episode off here. If you enjoyed, be sure to like. If you wanna see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Because I'll see you in the next single videos. And, um, follow me also down in the description below. And, uh, I'll see you in the next video or live stream of what I decide to make. And, uh, have a good day, everybody. The wolf remains one of his most feared enemies.